Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the uh, public forum here at the 28th Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe Expo uh, at the Hannover Messe 2022. Um, I would like to welcome you all to take a seat. I see some people standing in the back. We still have some wonderful seats free here in the front. Um, my name is Joost Wendling. I will be your moderator for the next 20 minutes, and I will be talking about the EFOI hydrogen energy solutions for mobile and stationary applications. I will be talking about this topic with SFC Energy, and then specifically Stefan Leisner, who is the business development manager yeah, of SFC Energy. So uh, give, a, give him a hand. <laughs> All right, Stefan, welcome. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. So, so um, if I understand correctly, SFC Energy has been participating here for the past 11 years. So I think most of the people here uh, have heard of you before. But for those who haven't, can you please uh, introduce us to SFC Energy? Sure, I can. Uh, like 11 years was only me uh, t uh, participating over here. SFC is on the Hanover Show since 15 years or longer. So pioneers in fuel cells over here as well, and uh, yeah, we did start as a yeah, more or less developing company of, of direct methanol fuel cells. We did develop stacks, modules, systems at the end, and uh, since over three years now, we also have a portfolio for hydrogen fuel cells. Um, so yeah, we did uh, see the, the, how, the market, how it was... Uh, um, processing over the time, we did see the ups and the downs, and uh, yeah, we are still here and uh, very happy to, to see you all around over here, seeing that the Nova show is going on, seeing that uh, there are so many people around, familiar people, and so much interest from the people. So uh, that's super exciting, and we're happy to be here, for sure. All right, yeah, I think this is a good place to be for, here for you guys. Um, so you guys, the, the, the modules you produce, you do everything, right? So stack development all the way to the integration. Um, why? I mean, we did start as a, a company which uh, took, um, yeah, started with the development of the stack, of the, the fuel cell itself. And first we saw, okay, we don't want to sell a stack. We don't want to produce a stack because the people, what they need actually is, is energy. So we did start with this integration of the stack into a module which was uh, actually made for, for caravan users. So this was our first market actually, to uh, commercialize the fuel cell into the market. Um, they needed to have a, a working system which is fit to their application. And the easiest was to have a battery charging system. So we did provide them a system which was easy to integrate. And by time, the market did change, uh, the application did change a bit, so we did set our focus to other markets like the industrial market where we did see the fuel cell is also a good match and over there this market was a bit different because the, the customers at the end they wanted to have like a complete solution they wanted to have a power plug available over here to plug in their, their, their sensors their cameras or whatever they wanted to power and they wanted to have it like with a huge autonomy and also maintenance free so as easy as possible so we did start to provide complete solution, and also that's the same approach what we do at the moment with the hydrogen fuel cells. We have the stack, we put it into a module, we manufacture the module, we do the, the, the serial process behind that, and then house in the modules into complete solutions to provide the customer a complete system, which is then easy to integrate, easy to operate, which is standardized that you have one setup in the field and not 50 different setups which makes it then more easy to, uh, to, to do the service, to have um, yeah, troubleshooting in the field, for example, to provide services around the system, because it's, only, it's always one system set up, more or less. And that's important, I think, to, to get standard systems to the field, which are then also within the, the product life cycle and to have everything available from, as a manufacturer over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so what is the current product offering then? Because you mentioned uh, methanol fuel cells, you exactly. mentioned hydrogen fuel cells. Exactly. <laughs> um, smaller, bigger, what is, the, uh, what is the product offering at the moment? I mean, if you looked into the, the, the hydro, hydro, uh, fuel cell 
market of fuel cells in general. I mean, the fuel cell can be a, a milliwatt to a megawatt. It could be everything. So our product range uh, is um, with the DMFC, direct methanol fuel cell, is from around 20 watts to around 500 watts, half kilowatt. And the uh, hydrogen product is uh, 2.5 kilowatt modules, which can be stacked together uh, and parallel provides 10, 20, 30 kilowatt of output power. It's a bit depending on the custom, on the application, on the, yeah, on the, on the system setup at the end. Yeah, so, so that, that's the module you mentioned. I saw that at your stand, which is uh, stand C16, by exactly. the way. So if you want to visit them, C16. You won't be able to miss it, actually, because it's right in front of the entrance or exit. So uh, you guys will all pass by there. <laughs> um, but other than the modules I saw at your stand, I also saw a module outside. Exactly. Right next to the uh, sausage and beer stand <laughs> for those. Uh, uh, <laughs> the perfect <laughs> those location for, for something exactly. to show. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's that all about? That, that was a pretty big unit. Yeah, it's actually the H2 Gen set, which is outside. Um, this is a completely fully integrated fuel cell with an internal hydrogen tank. And actually, it's meant to replace diesel generators for certain applications. So what we see, I mean, like we are in the market since 20 years now, and and now the time is pretty much right to go into the market to replace a diesel generator. It always was, but diesel itself was, uh, there were other problems before, so the, the generator itself was not that evil. Um, nowadays, with all this, the renewable energy change, with uh, the crisis in Ukraine, with all this, the trouble we have over here at the moment, the, the global warming, we see that there's a, a huge demand to replace a diesel generator with something green. And this is something what we did set up. So we tried to demonstrate how to make it possible to provide green energy, emission-free energy, to applications like construction, like events, who have a lot of diesels or diesel generator in, in, in operation. And the difficulty nowadays, I think, is to to go to a construction site and tell the people, hey, here's your generator, and this is hydrogen, have fun and enjoy and connect it and let's go. A lot of industries in this range are a bit old fashioned. So they see, okay, I have a diesel, I have my application, I have a generator, the power up of the generator is 50 kVA, that's fine. What is your load? I don't mind because I have 50 kVA, I let the generator run 24 seven and that's how it works nowadays. We have the approach that we uh, integrate a fuel cell, a battery pack, an inverter. And with the battery and inverter, we, peaked, uh, we uh, take the peak loads. And the fuel cell is made to run for the average load. And that makes it super efficient at the end, and also emission free. And the difficulty nowadays is a bit to, to get information from the field. What is the real load? What is the load profile? What is the application? The people just don't know because they always had like 50 kVA available and that's it. And we had an interesting trial run um, some weeks before at a construction site in Austria and we were powering uh, a container. And uh, they did use normally a 30 kVA generator and they let it run 24 seven. And we did connect an hour gen set, did let it run for two days and the load profile was at the end was four, k uh, four, k uh, KV, uh, four kilowatts, and the peak load, which was for me quite funny, was actually the water heater of six kilowatts. So like at the end they had no need for this big generator. They did consume diesel 24/7. Even they could use something pretty pretty much available in the market already. So and that's our approach to replace those applications. But the tricky part will be to understand the load profile, to get the information, to sum up, to have a, a fitting product at the end. And, and is that now the main difficulty, you would say, the main hurdle you guys face? I think so, yeah, definitely. So it's like um, people just majorly don't know. They just If they see a power plug, it's like in your household. You just go there, you plug everything together. What is the, what is the, the, the power draw? I mean, like that's... People know that who have a smart home, for example, they might know it. But people who live in a uh, in a flat, they, ha they have no clue. I, I me, me, for my myself speaking, I know energy quite well. But what do I consume at home? I have the the yearly bill, have a kilowatt hour demand, and have a price behind that, and that's how I get my information. Uh, of course, I could measure all all components, but uh, I struggle with that. And people on the construction side, they don't mind. They just 
see a power plug and they plug everything in, you know, like, and that's, that's, that's the, the, one of the trickiest part, I would say, to design a right product at the end. Yeah. And, and with the ongoing electrification and more attention also for hydrogen technologies, do you feel like that is changing? Do you notice, notice a change in, in how, how customers approach you with, with these questions? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because, like, I mean, it's, of course, it's a trending topic. It's like people want to, they see hydrogen as something where also the governments do, do invest over here. There are uh, private companies who do invest over here. Everyone is speaking about it, so people want to not fall behind. So there are a lot of requests about like uh, hydrogen, how to use it, where can I get it, what can I do with it, and where can I use it at the end. And I think that's important because, like, for example, as we take a look in Germany, we have like this uh, this shift of energy production or um, production from old-fashioned fossil fuels to renewables. So we can produce also when we have peaks of wind energy, can produce hydrogen. Why, why not using the hydrogen? for something we can then use in the field to power other applications. So the people did use diesel, they want to replace diesel, and hydrogen is a pretty interesting application, but it does not work everywhere. So there's also limitations, of course. I mean, like, it's high pressure tanks, it's like, uh, volume-wise, is still obstacle, and of course, the infrastructure is not yet available. If we want to have the, the genset something in the field, there's uncertainties about what is allowed to place, what can we place, who's responsible, who has zero clue of hydrogen and just say, no, 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 I don't want it here, that's a gas, I, uh, uh. you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of education as well, and that's what we see in the market as well. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, okay, so I was on your website and I saw that SFC has existed as a company since 2000, and the eFOI product range, which is the product range we've been talking about, has been around since 2006. So, you know, you started off with methanol. You already mentioned that. What are some other big changes in your product since then? I mean, in general, it's like we did start with this small power ranges, small power products, and um, I think the most important step was 2006 that we commercially rolled those products out into the markets. I mean, we had some difficulties over here to establish for the quality and stuff, and this this came more and more by time. So we did learn about standard processes. We did, um, for example, provide around 500 fuel cells to Volkswagen. And, and then the, the auditor of Volkswagen came to our SFC, a, a 60 employee strong company, and completely dismantled us. You know, like they, uh, no, 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 we don't, that's not going to happen, that you're going to be a provider for Volkswagen. So, um, but at the end, we managed somehow to make it happen, so the deal was still done. But it was a wild journey, and uh, I think by time, the, there were low parts, I think, as well. I mean, everyone who was dealing with fuel cells and hydrogen, there was like eight to so seven or six years ago, it was like really, everyone was struggling over it. There was no interest in the market, there was no need for fuel cells. It was like always the, yeah, it did not work with automotive. That will never happen. It will commercially never be something which is interesting. And this the change, I think, the last four years, from four years onwards. Also, the, the pandemic, as bad as it sounds, it helped a bit to go forward the crisis as well over here, the, the environmental change. It's, it's now a training topic, and there's so much interest from everywhere. That's incredible. And that's what we see as SFC with our product, that we did survive. And now we can, uh, yeah, commercially-wise, take the fruit, I would say. Yeah, slowly, slowly leaving the Wild West uh, phase. Exactly. Say. Yeah. So I was wondering, are there any questions from the audience? You can just put your hand up if you do have a question. No questions. Luckily, I have a question. Um, <laughs> you, you're telling us about your, your product range. It sounds super interesting. Uh, you've been telling us about the main hurdle, which is, I think, um, customers perhaps not knowing their load profile and not knowing exactly what they need. So what is it you're looking for here? What would be the perfect person to walk into your booth in, uh, in 10 minutes when you're done with this talk? And, and what would be the, the dream there? Uh, it's difficult to say. I mean, like, in general, we are super happy that, first of all, we can be here. That's important. And uh, we are happy to speak with everyone who comes by. Of course, the, the big dream of, uh, I don't know, like an automotive company buying 100 fuel cells directly. But it will not happen. It's not our market, actually. So. I think we did grow up in a lot of niche markets, and 
there were so many applications where I never, when I would start 10 years ago with FC or 11 years ago, like, this will never happen. This is like so a wild application, and now they are one of the bigger customers where you think, like, okay, sometimes it's like you just have to open your screen, you have to just listen, and the people have ideas and they know how to use it. And that's what it's all about to being over here to get information, to get people on our booth to speak with them about technologies, about projects, applications, even. As you said, like Wild West, even they are so out of your mind and say, okay, like give it a try and we support you with that. And that's, I think, um, what I like the most to be over here, like to, to speak with the people, to explain our, our point of view, our portfolio, our limitations, what we have. There are definitely no limitations. A few cell doesn't always make sense in every, in every business case. So sometimes it does just not work. But there are so many applications where we have been successful. And one of my, uh, this is one of the applications where I thought like this will never happen, was actually also something we did firstly connect on the Hanover Fair like 10 years ago, was offshore floating LiDAR systems. So wind measurement systems were offshore in the ocean, floating around for one year. And uh, there is no service required in this one year. This was the, the, the the specification, and I think like um, I, it's not going to happen. It's salt water. That's like rough waves, everything, and it's just commercially an interesting application nowadays. They just are with a few cells, offshore, measuring winds in the middle of the ocean. Where I always thought like this will never be, uh, <laughs> this will never happen. But <laughs> but here it is. Never yeah. say never. Yeah. That sounds very interesting, and I would love to hear a lot more about that. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Oh. Um, so for everybody who still does have questions, you can uh, visit SFC Energy at stand, uh, sorry, at, uh, at booth C16, which is over there, close to the uh, entrance and exit, uh, or you can go outside here between Hall 13 and Hall 27, next to the uh, the beer and uh, what is it? Beer, beer and uh, sausages. And sausages stand, <laughs> indeed, and take a look at their uh, at their gen set. Um, Stefan Leisner, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Um, Great pleasure. Thank can you. I get an applause for Stefan? Thank <laughs> you.